Hello. Hello. That's good. Both, both good. at the same time. Good, yeah. good coordination. Uh, welcome to the Naked Filmmakers with me, uh, writer director Lance Nelson, and me, Alex Tabrizi, <laughs> who does lots of things on lots of films. Um, for those people that haven't watched before, we do this blog. We're doing it roughly once a month now. We did it once a week during our own crowdfunding campaign, where we choose five projects from crowdsourcing uh, websites like Kickstarter, like Indiegogo, they're all from Kickstarter this week. We choose five projects that we like, uh, we talk about them, we talk about why we like them, we talk about why you should support them, and then we also try and win them money with uh, what are the National Lottery scratch cards. If we win a really big prize, we'll donate something to everybody, all the, all the uh, um, uh, projects we're going to feature. If we win a small prize, a really tiny small prize, um, we might donate uh, something to one project depending on how much it is, especially as I'm now in a lot of debt after shooting uh, The Journey. Uh, we both work on the feature film The Journey, we both work for Eagle Stair Films. Um, if you want to check out The Journey, our own feature film, go to Grease the Movie at uh, Facebook. Grease is in the country, not the musical, and you can read about it there. Um, we were supposed to do this programme a week ago, it's a bit late uh, because somebody couldn't come round a week ago. <laughs> so, um, uh, so we need to give a shout out to a, to a, a project called Josephine Doe that we, we were going to feature in our top five last week. Normally we try and feature projects that have still got at least 20 days to go. Josephine Doe only has four days to go. Um, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, do you want to start that um, video? Joseph, so we're, we're going to give a special shout out to Josephine Doe because we were going to feature it. We did contact the films, um, the, the, the team behind the film. The team behind the, uh, the film are um, Erin um, Chipolote, is it? Chipolate? Uh, that's Erin there. Um, she's the lead actress and um, I believe it's her script. And she recruited um, the director, Ryan Michael. And uh, Daniel uh, Denigre, is it? Denigre, yeah. Denigre, who's um, the, the producer in LA. Well, we, we really liked this video. Um, it was one of the ones that immediately got our attention, not just because of Elizabeth Bennett's really big hair, though that was a factor. <laughs> but um, Alex, why did you why did you like it? Um, I just I love the pitch. Um, it, there wasn't that much about the film in the actual pitch itself, the video. That was the one week thing we thought, not enough about the actual story. We got yeah. the gist of it and then we watched the other videos, Big Hair there that we mentioned. Big Hair, um, always good. Always good, but um, yeah, we, we, we liked the team and the way they come across yeah, and did, that it was yeah. quite funny. And we thought it was, if you, if you go on to Kickstarter guys and look at the journey pitch, it was quite similar to our, to okay. our own one. So um, we quite like that. And this, this dog as well kind of looks. That like was a her, deal breaker the dog from the for artist. me. That was a that was a deal breaker. Yeah. So um, no, I really like. We really liked the video, and uh, we actually contacted the team and um, said we were going to feature it, and then we got delayed by a week, which was really annoying. Both Daniel and Aaron actually uh, wrote back to to me, and now my friends list on Facebook. So we'll, we'll be it's staying always, in touch. Always nice when that happens. It's always nice when that happens. We're all about increasing the network and um, you know reaching out to fellow filmmakers. That is what we're trying to do, especially with crowdsourcing, um, so that we all might kind of look to each other to help our projects. And you know, at the end of the day, if you've got a network one one day of a thousand filmmakers that will all put ten dollars in every time one of you has a project, then we might all get funded a little bit faster. Is that, is that a new feature of the show? Uh, maybe, maybe, when we okay. have enough people. <laughs> um, but I mean, one thing we did say is we might personally put, put our own money on a um, one each month. Um, I think we, we probably are going to do that. Um, and there's uh, the girl with the big hair again. Um, so, Elizabeth Bennett. So, it's, it's, we haven't talked about what it's about, which again is the one thing that's lacking from your, your pitch. But it's um, Josephine um, is the sort of the lead character of the piece, and it's about a woman who's kind of lost and lonely, and her reality isn't quite matching up to what it should be. That's kind of what I get. Yeah, that's what I got as well. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get a lot more, but we did like the pitch. We like the team. We think the project will be good. You can read more about it. Uh, now these guys have only got four days to go. So I'm going to give them a shout out on my timeline on Facebook tonight. We're going to try and get this edited today. We don't we don't normally do much editing on this. We like to do it all in one take. Um, we're also going to give you a shout out on the Greece um, timeline. So 3,000 people plus will will see that. 
because they've only got four days to go and they've still got eight grand or so to raise. Yeah. So they've raised about yeah. 12,000. So we know that's tough. We were, we were sort of in a similar boat at one point. Apparently that cat gets killed if the, the money doesn't get raised. <laughs> so um, let's move on to the, to the first of our top five. Right. But that's a special shout out to um, Josephine Doe this week. So the first of our projects, number five, is Limbo, which is by um, Fang So Lu um, from LA. Haynes Landry is the producer. Nice jacket, Haynes, by the way. Um, Alex, you're going to talk a little bit about this one because this is one of your favourites. It's adapted from a story by Adam Spielman. It's a short, I believe. I think so, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, it's, it's got a lot of... Uh Decent people involved. The, this chap here, who's a comedian, and um, someone else, a voiceover artist, who who plays a character in Bob's Burgers, very popular cartoon in the US. Um, and it's about a guy, this guy, uh, who dies, goes to hell, and, and pretty much all the afterlife, whatever, and pretty much gets every request or, or pleasure. Well, I think it's more, it's more like he goes to heaven, isn't it? It's like, is it? It's, 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 it's limbo, it's the kind of in-between, well, isn't it? it? So it, maybe I think uh, everything that you want is there, so if two women in a jacuzzi and chicken wings is, is, is your idea of heaven, yeah. that's what you want, and your every request is granted. Yeah, and yeah, And then yeah. he begins to question whether that is actually an ideal life, or yeah. whether life is more rich if you're yeah. challenged. So it's, it's 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 kind of it's in limbo, but it becomes hell for this yeah. for this chap. Yeah, yeah. I, I think eventually, yeah. I think yeah. and there's a message there, quite possibly, that you know the journey and the challenges make life worth living. Great idea. This is the director, um, and um, the the pitch is quite funny as well, with the actor um, appearing from the future yeah. trying to tell people to tell him not to do the film, which I thought was uh, pretty amusing. <laughs> Um, so that's Limbo, which is on Kickstarter. I think they've got um, a substantial number of days left. Quite a bit of money to raise still, but um, yeah, I mean they're they're looking for a thirty thousand goal. So pretty big goal, guys. But um, good luck. Good luck. It's a project. We like it. We like the project. So um, we hope you you get some support. Our next one, seventy two hours, a Brooklyn love story. This is from a team in New York City. They're called the Real Works Team. So a big shout out to um, the Real Works Team from London, the UK, from myself and Alex. Um, this is um, an idea for a feature film. The way the feature film comes across to me, guys, just so you know, is Kids Meets Before Sunrise. So if you put those two films together, that's kind of what I'm getting from your, your movie. I don't know if that's right. Um, the director is a guy called Rafi Rivio. This is an updated version of their original pitch. And it's a group of young uh, filmmakers from Brooklyn who I think formed the Real Works team. One of them did a documentary about him and his friends, and that documentary then spawned an idea for this feature film. And I, I like the way that they're um, kind of like with uh, mine and Dickens' improvisation acting workshop. Sometimes they're kind of workshopping the script with the group mm. and, and talking through the starting ideas and the scenes. So very much a big collaborative team uh, thing, a bit like Shanice Lindsay's project in London that we featured a few few months back. Um, so we like those kind of projects, that community feel, because filmmaking is a bit of a community now when you take the Hollywood equation away. And of course, it's giving um, young people a chance to get involved in something. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I suppose I said most of the things about that one. Alex, did you want to add anything about it? Um, well, I've not seen this new pitch, as you've just said, but um, I like the old pitch. That's the great. end of that. I just want to take that down. But well, yeah, the thing was there was just a little update at the beginning. To yeah, it, so. yeah. I mean, they've still got quite a way to go, but they have got 20 days, so a lot can happen in, in 20 days. Yeah, yeah. Good, um, good project, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we'll be, we'll be keen to, to see what happens with that one. Uh, it's on to one of your favourites now. This is my favourite of the week, uh, by a margin, because there were two projects I really like this week. This is The Legend of Ben Hall. Now, I'm a bit of a Western fan anyway, good Westerns, um, some of the old school ones and more recent ones like Tombstone, Silverado, um, but I like the oldies like Sons of Katie Elder and the, the, the old John Wayne uh, stuff. This is Matthew Holmes, who's from... Um, Melbourne in Australia, shout out to you uh, Matthew, we'll be finding you on Facebook soon. Really like the ambition of this project, can we get rid of this thing? Um, it's basically about this 
this guy, Ben Hall, who was a bit of a notorious, we don't want to exit full screen, notorious um, outlaw. I love the way they've done these animatic storyboards to give you a feel of how the film is going to look, which is, is really cool. That was one thing that really grabbed me. But he's, I really like this guy, he kind of reminds me of uh, me, and he's very passionate. You liked the project as well though, didn't you? Yeah, of course, there's, there's not much to dislike about it, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. The only thing I would say is, I wanted to know more about this Ben Hall character, because I've never heard of him before, and it would just be really nice to have just a bit about him, just an overview of maybe some of the fights he fought, or who he was. I thought that was lacking from it. But and, you I could, and I think if I wasn't really interested it, that much in the genre, I don't know if I would have looked it up on Google. I, I, I he would because he's, he's a geek, so he, he loves it. But, um, but no, you know, it's great. Look at the production value; it's great, and this guy's really passionate. So yeah, I mean, it's, really good. It, it's a it's a quite a big amount of money, seventy five grand. But you know what? You can see how resourceful this guy is and the team that he's built around him. And I think if you put your money in, it'll be it'll be money really well spent. Yeah. Um, this is really good. I'll it, tell you now, if we if we get a big, if we get the full prize, which is four million pounds, uh, Matthew, I will fund fully fund your seventy five grand. Uh, so I'm just making that promise to you now. Just, so, just just one more thing as well. What I really like is showing all these DVD covers and, and merchandise thing. It really kind of helps you envision, envision what it will be like. Yeah, the finished an product. actual finished product. The yeah. actor's great that they've cast as well. Um, um, I'm not familiar with his other work, and I do watch a lot of Australian drama. I've watched Underbelly. Um, the, I've got the great bookie robbery over there. Um, the Light Horseman is one of my favourite films as well. But I'm not, I don't think I've seen him in anything. But he looks he looks great and comes across as quite a nice guy. Uh -huh. It was nice it was nice when awesome. people come across as, as just a nice bunch of people. Um, and yeah, he's got a, a really good team that've worked on some pretty big shows. So uh, Matthew, best of luck to you, mate. Um, if we get if we win big, I'll come over and give you some money and be an extra uh, in the film and get shot or something. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll both get shot. <laughs> we'll both get shot brutally by um, by Ben Hall. In the you can get shot in the face if you want. This is, uh, this is one of your faves, um, Alex. Uh, so moving on to number two, Elstree, 1976. Do you know what happened in Elstree in 1976? Star Wars happened. Yes. And uh, this is by John Spira of the UK. It's a documentary. It's been shot, so the money's for post-production. Yeah. yeah. And um, tell us about it, Alex. Um, it's about the extras and background artists that uh, were present in the Star Wars trilogy, the little the, mainly the original film Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I really like about it is it's not just a geek out, cause I'm not really interested in Trekkies and learning a bit about stuff like that, but what's interesting is these characters conflict, um, there's very two sides of the coin, you know, for and against the whole going to these conventions and putting yourself forward as a background artist and extra and signing and, stuff. And making money that way, yeah. signing pictures. And then there are kind of, there's people in the higher echelons of that, the, the actors with the bigger parts, Yeah, yeah. Who, who don't necessarily approve of those extras doing that. Yeah. Which yeah. by the way, I have to say, I think is bollocks. <laughs> I think if you can make money any way in your profession, whether you're an extra or you're a lead, you should. Yeah. So sorry, but you know, if you, I think if you're being arsy about that, I, I'm not going to work. With so you. Supply and demand. If there's someone after it, then yeah, you know, why not? What, what's the no harm? harm you know, what's, what, what, what's the harm? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're a bigger actor and you've done bigger things, then you, you know you're on a different path to success anyway. So I don't, I, I don't see the problem really. I love these shots. I just try and find one or two. Um, you get all the characters holding their helmets and yeah, they're, 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 like their original costumes. It's just, Really nice shots. I mean, it's also about how uh, being an extra on Star Wars kind of was just a gig at the time, and then it actually had a profound effect on their some of their lives, kind yeah. of emotionally. I think this guy played. Um, did he play Big Starklighter? This guy. I have no idea. <laughs> this role got was cut. I, I'm not sure. It might be a different actor. Yeah. I think that actor was in uh, an, quite a big film that I saw recently. Actually. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we digress. But very interesting documentary. I'll definitely be buying a copy of this uh, when it comes out. And uh, again, if we get a big prize, it's, it's it's doing pretty well actually. Out of all the ones we featured, um, L Street nineteen seventy six is definitely going to hit its target. Yeah. I think the others are all struggling. 
so it might not be one that you have to reach for your wallet for if you, unless you're a Star Wars fan yeah um, there's probably other projects here that, that need your money a bit more urgently mm -hmm. um, but you know great project great idea and I love the level of cooperation you've got so on number one welcome to Reef welcome to Leith to Leith yeah to Leith sorry um, I mispronounced that um, Michael B. Nicholas and Christopher Walken, not Christopher Walken. Not Christopher Walken. Not Christopher, uh, from Brooklyn in USA. Sorry, uh, Christopher, I'm sure you've heard that joke a lot of time. This is Welcome to Leith. Um, might have been interesting to leave the sound on for a little bit, actually. But this is a. Tell us about it, Alex. It's a um, um, documentary. Wow. Very interesting. Very what, interesting. What can I say? It's, uh, it, it, I didn't expect it to turn out in the in this little preview the way I was thinking. Um, it's very kind of gentle. Um, these beautiful landscapes uh, say a lot in themselves. But it's actually about a one particular man, very influential, uh, very charismatic, I suppose, who is a white supremacist leader, and he wants to cleanse this small American town of uh, ethnic people, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he he's moved there. Um, and it's, uh, I think at the beginning the people are saying, oh, you know, we don't have many neighbours and our population is really small. This is Leith in Dakota yeah. and when we get new neighbours, it's great, you know, we're, we're pleased to see new people because there's not many people around. And this new family moved in and decided because this was quite a remote area and there was not many ethnic people living there, yeah. it was going to become some sort of Ku Klux Klan white supremacist haven. And, you know, they were going to start sort of forcing that attitude upon the town and mm. potentially trying to, and then, and then recruiting other people to come and live there mm. who, who share their views. And um, it's all got pretty nasty. The filmmakers, I think, had balls as big as brass. They basically went and lived in the town kind of incommunicado and um, mm. they, 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 they were totally neutral. They listened to both sides. I, I find it quite hard to, to be neutral in my opinion, mm. just watching it, I just, mm. yeah. I mean, this is an interracial couple, my, my wife's black. I, th I think you can you afford know. to be, when it's so decided, I, I, I think you can afford to be neutral because it says a lot for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because, you yeah. know, you... Yeah, uh, I mean, let, let the characters um, speak for themselves. Start um, it, mate. Uh, and um, I think that's the guy Production from, from Leith coming out. <laughs> um, I will have to call you back because I'm in the middle of recording a video. Not a problem. But, you know, it's okay. All right. Okay, bye. Who was it? So, um, you're going to appear on YouTube. Uh, thanks for that call. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, this is basically the, the roundup of that. Um, yeah. And... Uh, well, not more that we can say other than we think very important very, film. Very strong film. Very important film. Very um, it's been shot already. The money's for post-production, I think. That's right, yeah. Um, it's not anywhere near its target. And um, I th I'm sure the film will get out there, but mm. I think people should should donate. A mm. um, couple of quick shout-outs to some of our um, supporters and previous uh, people. Um, Ellen and uh, Caitlin, uh, the banana team from Blaine, um, in, I think they're based in New York, but they're not from there. Um, they're always staying in touch with us, and uh, it's very encouraging to hear what's coming along with Blaine, the, the movie. Want to see that feature film soon. Um, Ryan Moody, who produced Obituaries, which I personally put some money on. Technically, he's my boss because I'm an associate producer on that film. Um, he, um, my package is already on its way to me, so thanks very much for that. And I can't wait to see the film. Um, really excited about being involved in that one. So, moment of truth. We're going to um, we're going to scratch scratch some money. If two numbers add up to ten, we win a prize. Okay, well, w weren't we meant to do some product placement this week? Oh, we were. Talk about the product placement, Alex. Uh, well, I'm. Uh, doing... I, don't, I don't think we did it in the end, did we? Well, it's there. I was trying to be subtle about it. But product, okay, so, <laughs> so who's um, sponsoring this episode? Technically they're not, but um, well, Boost, we, would, we, we drink a lot of Boost because... He you does. Know, I, well, I, don't drink I do, because as a writer I find it kickstarts me in the morning. I don't drink tea or coffee. Match two rows. We're, we're lucking out here so far. Okay. Um, and that, um, so on our, on our film set as well, I drank an awful lot of Boost. So Boost, if you want to sponsor the Naked Filmmakers just with free boost 
we'd be quite interested in uh, in that. Um, okay, so if we find a plane or a limo, we've okay. won some money. Um, so not looking good. No. Okay. So big fat zero so far. This cost me ten pounds, by the way. It's about fifteen American dollars uh, for those people that are in the uh, thing. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in quite a lot of debt from my from my movie. It's a lot riding on, on this at a minute. So uh, you know, it would be good for me just to get some money. Uh, anyway, I think we're we're. This Enjoy. Is, it's not looking good. No though. limos or planes. No limos or planes. Oh, mate. Yours weighs more than theirs. Fifteen, nineteen, twenty. We have won absolutely nothing. That's disappointing. Shame. Because there were some really good projects there this week. I would have liked to have chucked some substantial money on a couple of those. Okay, so we're going to be back next month. Uh, we're going to do these every month. Um, indefinitely for the moment. Our own film is premiering at the Empire Leicester Square. It's a special event premiere, but people can, can come to it. There's a limited number of tickets. It's kind of a... Carson Screw Crew, did I say that? Sorry, mispronunciation there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Screening, um, and um, there's going to be a lot of cast and crew there. There's going to be distributors. There's going to be guests. Um, so look out for that. Keep following that on Facebook.